Welcome back to Westmoreland at Gridiron here on the Westmoreland Sports Network. I'm now joined by Dave Kiefer, the head coach for the Golden Lions. His team riding high with a 4-1 record, including an impressive victory last week against Indiana area, 35-14. Coach, first off, congratulations on a really good run. Four consecutive victories. Overall, what has been the biggest key during that stretch? Well, I think, you know, kids are, are very very much driven by confidence and I think I think we missed on a game early in the season with Hemfield and I think that was a little bit of a motivator you know I think the kids have a very good perception of what we are as a football team you know but I think the Hemfield game was a little bit disappointing to them I think it was an eye opener you know and I think we walked away from it and said hey if that's one we missed or we dropped and we learned from the mistake and we can capitalize upon those mistakes and build upon our mistakes you know and get wins from what we did poorly then then that's what the most important part of week zero is but you know i think each week we we get a little bit better i think the confidence is is really a key component of it when you start to win you know you figure out how to do that and i would think that was one of the pieces that we had to put into the equation is learning how to win so i think each week we gain a little bit more confidence i think uh, you know, talk to coaches. Co- coaches will tell you when kids become confident, they become a lot better football players. And I think that's what's starting to happen with our football team. But we still have a long way to go with with truly being a, a championship caliber team. I know when I talked to you before the season about some of the expectations, you had some high hopes but said it would be so important to get off to a good start. And with the exception of the loss against Hempfield area in Week 0, you certainly did that, winning back-to-back non-conference games and now winning your first two in the Greater Allegheny as well. Do you feel, all things considered, halfway through the season, you are where you need to be? Well, I think we've put ourselves in a good position to, to compete in the conference. And I think, you know, now that you get two wins in the conference, I think that's that's tremendously helpful because now, you know, you're in a situation, you know, whereas you want to win every single game, but you don't feel pressed that if you don't play as well as what you do, as what you need to in one and you miss on one like we did early in the season, you know, you don't feel behind the eight ball as much. But I think, you know, when you get into the season, it's important to, to have success. And again, that goes back to my original statement with the kids building success. We came out, we missed on missed on the Hemfield game, came out and played a little bit better against Collinsville, but I thought we played a really good game. I think Mount Pleasant's a good football team, and I think we kind of jumped at them, and, and, and we kind of set the tone for that game. And that really has kind of propelled us to the next couple of weeks because I think it validated the kids the kids' belief of, of how good we can be. And then we went in the knock, and, and we played well, but we didn't play maybe quite as well and came out and played a little bit better against Indiana. So, you know, I think the, the wins definitely help. You know, there's no doubt about it. And uh, and we talked early in the year about having some early, early season success. So, you know, I think that definitely gives us a, a good feeling about where we are as a football team. But I think, you know, when kids believe that they are good or, you know, have a, have a belief that they're good, uh, that, that belief has to be validated and valid validating those, those beliefs come in the form of, of wins. So we have been able to do that. I think we're growing growing as a football team because of it. Final scores don't always tell the whole story, but if nothing else, your team has been very consistent the last four weeks. 36 points, 34 points, 34 points, and last week 35 points. What has been the biggest key in being so steady offensively for a month? Well, you know, I think it comes back to the players. I think our scheme is, is, is a good scheme. Ty George is kind of calling the majority of our plays along with Casey. And then, you know, naturally as a, as a former play caller, I'm always kind of chiming in and giving some ideas. But I, I'll be honest with you, I've tried to step back offensively and let Ty kind of call it. It's hard when somebody's trying to micromanage it. And him and Casey have a good, really good relationship. And then we have Jake Bromley, who's a former player who helps with our offensive line, who's up in the box. So I think collectively those guys as a group have a good understanding but I think the biggest thing is how well the kids understand it. You know, the kids really understand the scheme of what we want to do, what we want to do. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to the X's and O's, and, and those X's and O's that we have right now are pretty good football players. Cody Rubrick's a really, really talented player and has made a ton of plays for us this year. And then, you know, it's tough because you can't just cover Cody because you have Donovan on the other side. You know, Jaden Stevens made a couple of really big plays the last couple of weeks. We knew Jaden was there. And, you know, sometimes as a receiver, you know, you know, it gets a little bit frustrating because, you know, guys, they're, they're human, you know, and that, that selfishness kind of comes in. And our guys haven't been like that. You know, Cody's maybe not catching as many. Somebody else is catching more. And Christian Hostetler's done a really good job, and Matt Wallace has done a really good job. And Jerome Wallace was out for a couple of weeks, but Jerome has some catches. And it's just everybody's kind of kicking in, and, and it's tough to defend somebody when you can effectively run the football and you can effectively throw the football. And, and obviously when you're throwing it, it comes down to your quarterback. And, you know, we have a real, we're really lucky to have a great one in Hayden Tesca. So 
that what makes us successful offensively is we have a good group of kids. Our staff really understands what we're doing. And I think what makes it tough, and I think the majority of coaches will tell you this, when you can run it effectively and throw it effectively, even though our throw numbers outweigh our run numbers, it makes it tough to defend you because when you start overplaying the pass, you know, we're still good enough to run the football. And we have a couple of really good backs that can really hurt you in, in the run game. So I think that's what's been our success offensively. Talking to Dave Kiefer, the head coach for the Greensburg Salem Golden Lions. You mentioned Hayden Teska, your quarterback. He has been absolutely outstanding, putting up some prolific numbers. You had mentioned before in his limited sample size last year that he was pretty good before injury. Did you have any idea that he could be the leading passer in the WPIAL halfway through the season? No, I'll be honest with you, until about a week or two ago, I didn't even realize that that was the case. And I think it wasn't until the, uh, the Post-Gazette called and said, we want to do a little article on Hayden, he's leading the whip and I'm like, wait a second, he's leading the whip on passing. And I, I don't know, if, you know I, I don't know, I don't think we really, we don't really fix ourselves on statistics. And I think Hayden's the same way. I think if you called Hayden and said, would you expect it? Hayden said, I wouldn't care to saw him 4-1 or Hayden would rather be 5-0. and oh. You know, Hayden would trade up whatever to win games, and that's what makes Hayden good. He's very unselfish. He's very team-centered. Did I expect him to be the leading passer in Whippeal? No, by no means. Uh, did we knew we have a good fo- we had a good football player and a good quarterback? Yeah, we did. Uh, how good? You know, I think that all was dependent upon partially of how well the guys around him developed, and as you can see, they're developing well. And we knew Hayden could do it, but you also have to have guys that can complement him. And you can talk about the receivers and the backs, but, buddy, when it comes down to it, you've got to be able to protect him, and, and, and we've got to be able to run the football when we need to. And our offensive line's done a really good job with that. But Hayden's pretty good. He's very cerebral when he understands what we want to do. But most importantly, he's a very team-oriented kid that wants to see the team be successful. He could care less about that, the, you know, being first in the whip. We talk so much about the offense. The defense has been pretty impressive, especially over the last four weeks during this winning stretch. And in particular, against an Indiana team that had been very prolific, holding them to just 14 points. What stood out about the defensive performance against the Little Indians? I think collectively as a group, I think we're very balanced. And it comes to, you know, similar to what I said on offense, I think, you know, you look at our back half and our secondary, we're pretty sound in our back half. And a lot of the guys we talk about offensively and what they're doing, and we have a little bit of depth on offense. You know, I mentioned a bunch of guys there. And we still have some other guys we think we can sprinkle in on offense. You know, and those guys are the same kind of guys you can sprinkle in on defense. But, you know, you got to play four guys in the secondary, but when you got six or seven, it, it cuts down on their reps and wears them out a little bit less. So I think, you know, in the secondary, we're doing a pretty good job of being able to roll some guys in when we need to. we got a little bit of depth, and I think we're getting stronger and getting some guys back. But I think we're balanced there again. You know, our linebacking core was kind of the group that, you know, we needed to see grow. Uh, we felt that our front, our front three between Billy and Christian Mitchell Chesney and Caleb Chismar and then we had a couple other guys that have kind of popped up with Riggs and and Preston Henry and Aiden Thompson you know so we got six guys up front we feel we can roll in the linebackers is where we needed to see where we were going to be and how they were going to grow and you know Jaden Stevens is playing super super defense right now he keeps getting better at a position that we just kind of are getting getting him accustomed to you know he's going to be a really good high school player but I think he's going to be a really good college player and then our two inside guys are J.C. Wallace and, and uh, Tyrone Williams, and they've done a really good job. And then the other guys, our other, our other overhang has kind of been Rashad and Christian uh, Hostetler and some other guys that we sprinkled in. But uh, I just think we're balanced, and I think that's what makes us a good team, you know, on both offense and defense, that we can complement each other well. I think the guys up front do a good job running, taking care of the run pretty well, and I think the guys in the back half can match up pretty well for the pass. But we haven't been tested as well as what we, we're going to be tested in the future here with, with, with the passing game. A few years ago, even when your team was making the playoffs and having some good seasons, at least to me, it always felt like Thomas Jefferson and Bell Vernon area were going to be almost impossible for your team to hurdle. But this conference now is a lot different. I'm not sure that there's one team or two teams that are the favorite year in and year out, especially when you look at teams like Mars and Plum that are down this year after being good last year. So when you look at a whole, as a whole at the Greater Allegheny Conference, how do you handicap it? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, it, it, being in this conference, when you were in the other conference, you knew what you were getting each year. From, you know, TJ supposed to be down this year, and you see that was just a bloodbath they had with, with Bill Vernon this week. And Bill Vernon found a way to come away with the win, and, and Bill Vernon just continues to get better in, in so many ways, and they have some really talented players right now. So you knew what you were getting there, and then McKee scored gets, gets, gets thrown into that conference. And it wasn't even just those teams. I mean, you know, you're in and you're out. Trinity was always solid. Trinity always battled you. You knew you were going to get you know, John Miller does a great job and is always coaching them well. And, 
you know, you could throw in West Mifflin and, you know, Ringo had some seasons there where they were really good. But I think this conference is a little different. Traditionally, it's it's a very strong conference, and I think it's still strong this year. I think when you look at us and Hampton and Highlands and Armstrong, I think right now they're the four front runners. But we played Indiana last week and, and, and not the week before, and they're still good quality teams. Uh, I don't think there's bad teams. I think the big thing with our conference is there, there aren't bad teams. Uh, there's some teams that may be a little bit better, but I don't think there's bad teams. And I think that's traditionally what you get from the Allegheny Conference. So if you're not real balanced and not real strong, you know, you find your way toward the bottom a little bit because all the teams we play are usually always very balanced, you know, and are always very competitive. You may not get the TJ or the Bill Vernon, but they're always very competitive. You know, and in the past, Mars has been, you know, really, really good. They're having some struggles, struggles it looks like this year based on their record. But, you know, all the teams in our conference are usually very competitive. There's very few teams that you don't find that are well coached or that are lacking talent from one year to the next. And even teams that aren't having as much, much success this year, you know, such as the Plum, you know, watching them against Indiana last week, they still have a ton of ability. You know, they just got maybe some younger guys that they're breaking in. So I still think it's a really good conference. And when you come out of it, you're going to be prepared for the playoffs. And I think that's what's most important. Well, you have maybe the biggest test in the conference this week going against the Hampton Talbots, a team that's 5-0 and and scored a couple of conference wins against Armstrong and most recently against Highlands. When you look at Hampton, what stands out about the team? I think their team speed. I think that's what jumps out to me. I just think, uh, you know, they run really, really well. There's nothing when you watch them that you look at and say, man, this guy's really impressive as a player. You know, sometimes, like, if you would put Bell Vernon on, you're going to see the Whitlock kid and the Martin kid, that they're really, really talented, really, really good. That's not to say there aren't talented players on, on Hampton's team. But I think, what you know, to beat Hampton, it's a, it's a type of team that they play really well together, they play really fast, and they don't beat themselves. You know, and that's what concerns me is we've made some mistakes, you know, over the last couple of weeks where we put ourselves in tough situations that we cannot do this week against Hampton. Hampton does not beat themselves, and they operate their scheme. They're very, very disciplined. They're extremely well coached, and they have some really good pieces that, that run the scheme well, that they're very athletic, that run really well, and the speed across the front is it, it poses tremendous challenges to you. So, you know, I think what stands out is they're just a really good team, but I think what they do really well more than anything is they're very disciplined. They don't beat themselves. They execute the scheme, they play within the scheme, and you can tell they're very unselfish because they're spreading the ball around to a lot of different guys and they don't seem to have, you know, guys that are selfish wanting the wanting the